Hello brothers and sisters of Christ. Thought I'd take a break from uh, brick work. I hate leveling bricks. But I wanted to show you exactly, I'll show you, I'll tell you about an example. Some of my programs aren't working, I gotta reload the whole program on. And um, under my video, In Christ or In the Flesh, uh, someone decided to attack the true gospel. And he didn't really refute anything I said within the video. And he only proved what I was talking about being in the flesh versus being in Christ Jesus. Um, but his comment was, you will send a lot of people to hell with your false gospel. And this is what I mean by why I, I try to say one thing, maybe make two comments, but after that I just, this is why I just give the gospel. Don't cast your pearls before swine. Don't you waste your time with people who want a false Jesus, a false gospel who want their flesh. Don't waste your time on them, okay? That's why I say just preach the gospel. I hardly see people do it. Some do. But you say one or two comments. Someone just right out doesn't want to know the truth. That doesn't want anything to do with the real Jesus Christ. Or the King James Bible. God's perfect written word for English speaking people. Then preach the gospel. to Link a gospel message. You're done with them. Okay. Multiple. Multiples. Multiple. Multitudes. If I can read it right. Of people who expect to go to heaven will go to hell of torment. That's true. He's one of them. And the person here, salvation is easy. I've seen him or her make a few comments. But I really decided to look into this and what are the fruits of his easy believism? We'll see that. Okay. Multiples of people who expect to go to heaven will go to hell of torment. Uh, hell of torment. Um, yeah, but uh, hell is a burning fire. You burn for all eternity. It is torment. Uh, numerous good people, moral, moral people will find themselves lost when they expect to be saved. Here's the thing. I tried looking up the word moral in the Bible. It's not in there. Here's my belief real quick, brothers and sisters of Christ. I know we used to say it. I might have slipped up and said it. There's going to be good people in hell and bad people in heaven. Well, if we actually go off scripture, the Bible says... There's none righteous, no, not one. There's none that understandeth. There's none that seeketh after God. They've all gone out of the way. They've together become unprofitable. There's none that doeth good, no, not one. If I said it in the past, I was wrong. There's not one good person in hell. Okay. Guess what? There's not one good person in heaven. There's none that doeth good. Without Jesus' righteousness imputed to you, you're going to go to hell and you're going to burn for all eternity because there is no good people out there. Only bad. You have to come to the end of yourself and understand that state that you're in. You're a dirty, rotten, filthy, low-down, no-good sinner on your way to hell and you deserve to go to hell for sinning against an almighty, righteous God that's going to judge you one day. Okay? And you have to have sorrow for it. So there are no good people. Okay. And morals, real quick, morals, moral is not in the Bible. Okay. Morals is something lost people have to justify sin. If you've got good morals, you're the one that determines what's good and what's bad. You're the one that determines what's right and wrong. You get to play God. Morals not in the Bible. God's laws are written on every man's heart. That's what the Bible says, the schoolmaster to bring them to Christ. Okay. So I wanted to throw that in the record. You must trust that which Christ did and not your morals. Salvation is not what you do for Christ. See, now he's going to the changed life. We're saying that after salvation, after God saves you, that's when your works and your rewards and evidence of salvation is what you do for Christ. What are the fruits? Do you have good fruit or evil fruit? Okay. So he tries to twist it. We don't say you have to do something for Christ in order to get saved. You don't have to clean up your life. It's not based off works. Not like the faith alone people. The easy believism, just faith alone. You've earned salvation with your faith. Grace is no longer a gift. You've earned it. Okay? You did something for Christ. You had faith. The Bible says through faith. God's grace is what saves you. And it's a gift. You don't deserve to be saved. Okay? It's a gift. It is to trust what the Lord Jesus Christ did for you. 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. Now, he leaves out the part that I talked about. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this video of um, 
in Christ or in the flesh, in Christ Jesus or in the flesh. But he leaves out the part about believing in vain. We're talking about this, brothers and sisters. We'll be going through First and Second Corinthians, and we've already talked about it when we did our Romans 7 and 8 study, that what's going on in First and Second Corinthians, people are trying to say they're carnal Christians. What I'm reading, what I'm finding out, is Paul is separating lost from saved, fakes and frauds from who's truly saved. And it's not about being perfect. It's not about being sinless. It's about your heart. Okay, carnally minded, walking after the flesh, that's signs of someone who's lost. I was once like that. Someone who gets saved, they become spiritually minded and they walk after the Spirit. So he mentions 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, but doesn't talk about how you can believe in vain. First and se or Second Corinthians, it talks about how people are, wolves in sheep's clothing are coming in, they're preaching another Jesus, which is what this guy preaches, or girl, and receiving another spirit. This guy's got an antichrist spirit. And another gospel, he's accepting another gospel that Paul didn't preach. Okay. We are saved by God's grace. Yes, we are. Why do you say faith alone then? He'll say that in the next comment. Why do you say faith alone? If you're saved by God's grace, why do you say faith alone? Well, we're trying to say it takes faith to get God. No, faith alone means it's only faith. You don't need God's grace. You just need your faith. Why do people try to change the definition of English words? Alone means alone. One. Alone. You are alone. You're one person. You're alone. One. When you say faith alone, you're talking about faith by itself. That's it. Some people say grace alone, by faith alone. It's like, or through faith alone. Or by grace, faith alone. Well, you have one singular and one singular. I understand that. That's what we preach. We preach grace. We don't say alone because the Bible doesn't say alone. We don't add to Scripture like they do. We are saved by grace through God's, uh, saved by God's grace through faith. Uh, three parts to faith. Repentance, belief in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross, and confessing both in prayer. All three of these lead unto, unto or to salvation. In order to find God's grace, you've got to go through these three things. And if Ephesians 8 uh, 5, I think it is, 8 and 9, no, 2, 8 and 9, when it says, you know, through faith, it's not a contradiction. It takes faith to do all three of those things. They don't like repentance. They don't like um, confessing both in prayer. And they believe they've earned it with their faith because why would you even fight or argue the point of asking God to save you? Why would you argue that? Because you're lost. You're lost and you want to glorify your flesh and you love your flesh. Okay? It's all about your flesh. What did Satan say? I'll give you the world if you bow down and worship me. That's what he told Jesus Christ. I'll give you all these kingdoms if you bow down and worship me. He's using the same thing on these false converts and they take him up on that offer. I'll show you that this guy took, this guy or girl, took him up on that offer. This person took him up on that offer. Okay? We are saved by God's grace. Working works have nothing to do with our eternal salvation. Christ did the works for us when he died for our sins, was buried and rose bodily from the dead to make it possible for us to have eternal life. Once again, you see the, the, the thing is, is they try to preach truth. We preach the same thing. We preach the same thing. Okay? Eternal salvation is based off God's grace. Do you have it? It's based off you being, uh, was it created in Christ Jesus? Being in Christ Jesus. Did God truly save you? Are you worshiping the, the Jesus Christ of Scripture or a Jesus Christ? But notice he told me, I work, I, I teach a works-based salvation. Well, he does in the next one. I teach a works-based salvation and yet... He doesn't tell me what I actually teach and, and fight anything I teach. He just goes to try to tell his version of the gospel. So, everlasting life. Simply believe. Let's see. Oh, sorry. Eternal salvation. Christ did the work for us when he died for our sins, was buried and rose bodily from the dead to make it possible for us to have eternal life. Simply believe in Jesus for everlasting life. What about repentance? I did a study Brothers and sisters in Christ, I don't know if you guys followed along. Some of you did. Praise the Lord. If you don't want to watch it, that's fine. Salvation, uh, the three salvations. Salvation for, for a lost sinner. For a lost sinner. And part two is belief. And then there I proved that if you skip repentance, you're not capable of believing 
and the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. All it is is believe. All it is is believe. What about repentance? What about confessing both in prayer, the Bible says? For with the mouth confession is made to salvation or unto salvation. Unto salvation. It comes before salvation, if it's only believe. And they attack that. Romans is where the gospel is preached. First Corinthians, or Second Corinthians 15, 1 through 4 is Paul re-preaching the gospel to these people because mo a lot of, there was a lot of false converts mixed in with the saved. Okay? Simply believe in Jesus for everlasting life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And he just does 3.16. He doesn't keep going where it talks about men loving darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Okay? Uh, the work darkness. Anyway, the reason people don't get saved, truly saved, born again after salvation, because that's the whole thing they're fighting, is being born again. New creature in Christ Jesus. He does not want to be created in Christ Jesus. Okay? Let me look up that verse real quick. Okay, yeah. That's the one they don't do. We'll get to it. Ephesians 8 and 9. They don't want to read 10. They hate 10. And they'll say they don't, but they do. Because they never quote 10. Verse 10. So anyway, John 3.16. He doesn't read all of it. Start at 15 and go through 20, I think it is. And you'll read and realize that the evidence of someone who believes is... Um, let's just go there. John 3.16. I'm trying to keep this a short video, but sometimes you just got to go to the verse. John 3.16. You got to start at 15. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's someone who's saved. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath, believed, he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Remember what I told you, they're preaching a different Jesus. But he that believeth not is condemned. They don't want to believe in the real Jesus Christ. Why? Because that means a changed life after salvation. That means you belong to Jesus. He tells you what to do and you do it. And you want to do it if you're truly saved. You're in Christ Jesus. And he's attacking. He didn't really attack anything I said in there. He just says, I work, teach, works, based salvation. And this is the condemnation that light has come into the world. And this man, this is where he falls under. Men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. He doeth evil. We're going to show that here in a second. He hateth light because he likes living by the flesh, carnally minded and walking after the flesh. This, uh, for lights come to the world, men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For every man that doeth evil hateth the light. Remember we talked about the fruit, the two trees that Jesus talks about. An, uh, an evil, a bad tree cannot bring forth good fruit, and a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Okay, doeth evil, hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deed should be reproved. Okay, that's what a lost person is. Someone who believeth not is condemned already. Okay, he loves darkness and he hates light. How many of these people attack us for preaching a true Jesus? They love their darkness, they love their counterfeit Jesus that lets them have the world, and they hate the light, the Jesus that's preached in the, out of the King James Bible. The true Jesus Christ, not an antichrist. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. That's evidence of someone who's lost. But he that doeth truth, doeth truth, cometh to the light. What's that truth? Well, remember what it says, obey the gospel, um, repentance, uh, faith in the... Uh, Belief in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross, confess both in prayer, and then you ask God to save you. He that doeth truth cometh to the light. When you do those things, you come to the light. Who's the light? Jesus Christ. You find God's grace. That his deeds, after salvation, may be ma made manifest that they are wrought in God. He doesn't preach everything. He just links what he wants to link, and that's it. Okay. So, my response to him, everything I've told you, I told him. 
Okay. And I basically corrected, corrected him out and said, I never taught that you could earn salvation. I should have just said, do you believe in repentance towards God? Link the verses. Um, and I've done that before. Um, belief in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Quote the verses. Have you confessed it in prayer? Is, you know, basically confessed your repentance and your belief in prayer to God and ask God to save you. Have you done those steps? Do you believe that's the true plan of salvation? If he says no, he's lost. Don't waste your time with him. Okay. He comes back with another one saying, Dude, you're not saved. Dude, I'm not saved. You are lost and going to hell. You preach a false works salvation. Once again, he doesn't explain it. What do I teach that's works? He doesn't explain it. He just accuses me of works-based salvation, but he never once says, You preach repentance, that's a work. You preach prayer, that's a work. He doesn't pre say that. I preach a changed life after salvation. The Bible, and we're going to get to it, says that you're, you're created in Christ Jesus. Created. When you get saved, the new man is created in Christ Jesus. Old, th see, um, old things have passed away. Behold, all things have come new. You're a new creature in Christ Jesus. And this is where he gets mad. Because <laughs> I told him, I said, hey, you don't read all scripture. Let me show you what you won't show everybody else. And he just blew up. Salvation, and he all caps with the exclamation point, salvation is by faith alone. See what we're dealing with here, brothers and sisters in Christ? And I'm going to show you why he believes in faith alone, and he wants it. He just so desperately wants it to be faith alone, and I'll show you why. We're saved by God's, we're saved by God's uh, grace through faith, not by works. And then he, then he quotes, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Um, now i got to go find it again. <laughs> I lost it. Ephesians 2, 8, 9. How come I lost Ephesians 2, 8? Oh, no, here it is. 2, 8, 9. See, he'll say that. He'll say, for by grace are you saved through faith. And I've already done a teaching showing you how they hate the through part. They want to say grace alone. It used to be faith alone, like he just said. It's faith alone, and we're saved by God's and we're saved by God's grace through faith. We're saved by God's grace through faith. No, 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 no. You just said it's faith alone. Now you're trying to say it's God's grace through faith. Which is it? It can't be both. Faith alone means it's just faith. Period. That's what the word alone means. Okay. So they'll read eight and nine, but they don't like verse ten. Why is that? For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. The study I did about in, uh, in Christ Jesus or in the flesh shows that the circumcision made with hands, the old husband dies, the old man dies, the new man, God created the new man that you are, and you now are connected to Jesus Christ. You're in Christ. You're created in Christ Jesus. What's the evidence that you're created in Christ Jesus, that you're saved? Created in Christ Jesus unto good works. You know, works meet for repentance. The changed life. Which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. He didn't quote number t verse 10. Why is that? Let's find out. He threw a lot of other stuff. Then he claims I'm lost, and he throws verses, but then he doesn't read the verses about the evil fruit tree. He skips all that and goes down and tries to claim that it's written to the church and everything, and it's talking to the Jewish people. It says kingdom of heaven. Okay, it's talking to the Jewish people. I use that for instruction of righteousness on how you can tell a false convert from someone who's truly saved. A good tree will have good fruit. An evil tree or bad tree will have evil fruit. Good tree, I use it for instruction righteousness, is an example of someone who's truly saved. You might have a little fruit when you first get saved, but as time goes by, you're going to bear more fruit. God's going to trim the bad leaves off. He's going to groom you, basically, and help you grow. He's going to sanctify your life through His Word. Sanctify them through thy truth, thy Word is truth. So, the thing is, is this guy, his, his a name is Salvation is Easy. That's his title on YouTube. Okay? And if you go, and people say, well, you're judging according to the flesh. No, I'm not. I'm judging according to his attitude towards sin. Spiritual judgment. Okay? You go on, and you look at his subscriptions. 
I would be appalled if anybody saw my subscriptions like this as a Bible-believing, God-fearing man. Laura Legends, okay, she does videos on, I think it's paraphernalia from like uh, all kinds of stuff from, I'm looking at right now, you know, toys, uh, old cartoons like Thundercats, uh, He-Man, it looks like from right here, and it's just all kinds of, if you actually look into a lot of these cartoons and this, you know, it's for nerds, let me read it real quick about their saints for nerds. Laura Legend come to you live with a with my fat cat muffin man and doggo Dante bringing you everything nerdy from toy reviews, movies, news to DIYs. Stay legendary. It's worldly stuff that's junk, it's sinful, it's wicked. Okay. You think, well that's not that bad. Well let's keep going. Okay. Shelly, I don't even, I hate even going near that one. Shelly Darlington. Basically, she's very immodestly undressed. I mean, I would not even be caught dead with this channel at all. Okay. Founder of the Strong Curves Program, qualified personal trainer, yoga instructor, and bikini fitness champion, I help women build strong curves and get empowered and she's just dressed so modestly you say what does this mean anything what's his attitude how come he's not convicted by any of this he's got a lot of sites where it has to do with working out and you got all these women and men that are modestly dressed and these women that are all like you know trying to pump up and get all like huge like men He's got one team up level, it has to do with video games, where they take old video games and, because I had to look into it, just not say it. It's about old video games where they make little skits out of them and they do, uh, gosh. It's like back in the day where you could take an old, anim it's like animation only it's done with old video games like Mario Brothers and stuff. Where you make your own little skit, like a little story. And that's what it looks like, but still, that's wickedness and sin. Okay, um, Geekdom 101 talks about Dragon Ball Z and stuff like that. You want to talk about wickedness? Oh, it's not that big of a deal. It's not big of a deal. Why is this guy so, this person so desperate, so desperate to say it's faith alone? He just wants to believe it's faith alone. Here's another site he is, the Pix Pixel Kingdom. All the video games and stuff. A lot of them are very wicked video games when you look at their origin and what their actual foundation is. Uh, so, I mean, you just go through it and it's just got stuff in there that I wouldn't even be caught dead having. Even if I, I'm not a fake and a fraud, I know they'd like to say, yes you are. But even if you're trying to put on a, a big facade about I'm a godly man and I'm teaching the true gospel, why would you just be out in the open like this? It's just wickedness after wickedness. Why is this guy attacking me? Because he loves his flesh and he wants to be justified in his flesh. Okay? His soul is still connected to his flesh and he's claiming to be a Christian. He's not in Christ Jesus our Lord. Okay? He's taking Satan up on his offer. You can have the world. You can have the world. Do what you want, live however you want, and just say it's about good morals. You know, you get to define what's right and wrong. Not what God says. It's not about the Word of God. It's just about good morals. You get to decide what's right and wrong. So I cut people like this, when they come on, sometimes people see me where I just preach the gospel to somebody. I don't make a comment. The comment the person makes doesn't seem that bad. But brother and sister in Christ, you look at what they're linked up to, who they follow, who they, what they believe uh, from their channel, and you look at their subscriptions and stuff like that. Nowadays, a lot of them are trying to hide that stuff. That's why they're always in a question mark with me. They might seem right, they might add all, say all the right things, but if they're hiding their picture, like I can't stand people who use fake names and everything. If you're a ministry, um, I think you should have your ministry name and then a dash with your name or an initial or something, you know. Uh, just, you know, I just, I get tired of all these people that come on with all these fake, like, acronyms and 
titles and phrases and not their name and you go to click on their site and you're like okay this person doesn't sound right let's see what they're about they hide their subscriptions they hide any videos they put up and whatnot okay all you see is just there's nothing to go off of just some fake name so um so yeah like I said that's why I do it you look at them you see they're carnal carly minded walking after the flesh they reject the true gospel there's no point in talking about God's word with somebody who's lost there's no point none whatsoever so my advice for you and now that you can see a little bit of what even brother Brian went through and he still does and sometimes I'm on his channel uh, King James Video Ministries and uh, Sinners to Repentance brother JT's channel you wonder why I just don't get into the flesh and fighting with people who are lost you don't discuss, you don't, because if you try to discuss the Bible with someone who's lost, what is that called? Fellowshipping with somebody who's lost. He's lost, or she's lost. They're not going to get the Bible. You just preach the gospel to them. They want nothing to do with the gospel, brush the dirt off your feet, and move on to the next city. Okay. That's it for this one, and grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you, brothers and sisters in Christ, and my love for you in Christ Jesus.